Today is an absolute tragic day for the city of Charlotte and for the profession of law enforcement. Today we lost some heroes that are out to just simply trying to keep our community safe. So about 1.30 p.m. this afternoon, the U.S. Marshals Fugitives Task Force went to the 5,000 block of Galway Avenue in an attempt to serve a warrant on an individual for possession of firearm by a convicted felon. When they approached that individual, they were met with gunfire. Tragically, there were three members of the U.S. Marshals Task Force who were pronounced deceased, and there were th there were four CMPD officers who were shot, one being in critical condition who is now in the hospital fighting for his life. Retired Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Officer Keith Way, what happened today? Um, it just goes to the climate of the world today. Um, we're in a very violent world where everything is settled with a gun. Obviously, it escalated really quick. Right. And, um, you know, being an officer for 30 years, you know, I tell people I'm glad my last nine was as a detective, but all those years spent in the street and specialized units, we never know what we're walking into. If I pull you over, you could have just killed someone, but I don't know that. Right. What, who lives in that area? What, what, what's the terrain? The neighborhood is called Shannon Park, and I know you're familiar with Shannon Park. Yeah. Shannon Park is a nice middle-income neighborhood. It's really been taken over and gentrified like the rest of Charlotte is. Uh, a lot of people are coming through, buying their homes, renovating them, doubling the price. So what you've seen is quite a few. You've seen the landscape turn from predominantly African-American to it's becoming more a mixed community. Yeah. But you still have your hardliners in every neighborhood, you know. You're still going to have your, you know, it's, when I walked on the street, I don't care how much or how good a neighborhood I worked in, there's always going to be at least one knucklehead in there. So is it, so this is a multicultural neighborhood? Yes, yes. It's not just a predominantly black. Um, it's actually a really settled neighborhood. I remember growing up in Charlotte and it was one of those neighborhoods where if you lived over there, people thought you had money. Several officers being shot. And when I looked at this story, I said, oh my God, what kind of city are we becoming with something mm -hmm. like this happening in the city of Charlotte? I mean, well, what do you think, brother? Is this, and this has just got to be the um, the tip of the iceberg because as the city population grows, you're going to have more personality types moving to the city. I don't know. We don't know if these people are from Charlotte. Would you say with a, a shootout as violent as this with law enforcement, would you say that these are like homegrown Charlotte people or are they from out of town? Well, you can't really say because homegrown now is second and third generation here. When people are saying, I was raised in Charlotte, well, you might have been born here, but you were born in 1990, 1995. Yeah. You know, Charlotte's one, at one point, was the fastest growing city in America. Now it's the second fastest city growing in America. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's, mm -hmm. it's not the same Charlotte that we grew up with. And DJ, let me tell you this real quick. I'm on my way home, and I'm passing the major road to get to my house, and the police and the sheriff have a complex blocked off up here and look like they got another situation going on. So as a retired CMPD officer, is Charlotte becoming more violent and what you see on the horizon uh, based off this incident today, what is your forecast for the future for this city? Because in the year 2050, there's supposed to be 5 million people in the metro. We are a more violent city because we have people who have moved here um, and to be honest, a lot of people, when they come here, they have this mindset that people in the South are slow. Mm. You know, oh, y'all slow down South. Y'all slow. No one's slow. We just take our time. And the one thing you will get down here is they will take their time in killing you in the South, too. Right. That's right. Because, you know, um, some bad attitudes down here. And, you know, it's crazy because... 
you know, I'm, I'm going to go on the record. I'm really disappointed in our city council and our mayor because they are more interested in businesses coming here and building new apartments that people can't afford and building homes that people can't afford instead of helping the people that are here. So in your 30 years, have you ever seen this kind of police presence, this kind of activity in the city of Charlotte regarding this incident today? Oh, yes. Remember October 1993, two buddies of mine, actually the three of us were supposed to go to a meeting. I was detoured. They went to the meeting. They got killed on their way to the meeting. Wow. The two officers he's referring to is Officer John Barnett and Andy Nobles. They were killed chasing a man who ran through the woods near the Boulevard Homes housing project back in 1993. And, you know, I just call that God moved me because he had other plans for me. Yeah. And the presence that you're seeing now was nowhere near the presence of that night because we had every agency we had officers driving down from Salisbury, which is about an hour away. Yeah. You know, we had, um, because we have the, the multilateral agreement with other agencies, all, all the county sent police officers. The highway patrol brought their helicopter down from Raleigh. Wow. To coordinate with our helicopter. So, I mean, that night it was probably five, six hundred police officers out there. Yeah. But we had a wide area that we had to be cordoned off because we knew the suspect was somewhere in the area. And it was so weird because when he came out of the woods and they had arrested him, he didn't say anything to anyone but being a resident of Charlotte and he being a resident of Charlotte, he looked at me and said, hey man, I didn't kill those police. Mm. Which, you know, anything about the law that's considered an excited utterance. Nobody ever said that you killed anyone. Yeah. And he basically told it on himself. Wow. Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Chief Johnny Jennings also made this profound statement about officers and how they put their lives on the line every day. To these officers and these law enforcement officials that lost their lives today. And this is a good example of what we try to tell people every single day that when we put on this uniform, that we don't have any guarantees that we'll return home. But yet we have a lot of great men and women across this entire country that do it every single day. Gotta give um, condolences to those, the families of those that were shot. And the one thing, whether you like the police or not, anytime there's a death and at the hands of someone else, you can never, ever make amends for that. You can be forgiven in heaven, but you you can never make amends to that person. Yeah, that's right. Well, Officer Keith Way, thank you for the information, brother. And um, we'll follow up with you as this story unwinds. It, it could be something that, as far as the suspect is concerned, we that's what everybody's waiting to see. Who is this person who has caused this much carnage and just got the whole city of Charlotte shook up today? The attitudes of people right now that are out here just, um, just, they don't, they just get angry and the first thing they do is pull their gun out and shoot. And that's something we did not have, say, five, six years ago. Right. 